the Bitcoin price is back down below $30,000. And today we're going to be talking about why that's happened. Also, which levels we're going to be watching to be potentially buying or even shorting the market. We'll be talking about Ethereum as well as some news articles. So if that all sounds good, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and make sure you stick around all the way to the end because I'm going to be sharing with you a very, very important strategy, how I make money during a bull market and a bear market. So if that all sounds good, leave a like and let's get straight into it. Enjoy. Straight into the video, we've got 2.86% down in terms of the global crypto market cap currently sitting at 1.21 trillion. So, you know, we're constantly seeing price going up, people getting trapped. In my last video, I talked about the bull trap, which we saw. Um, and you can see here, you know, we did come back under $29,500 once again, back below that 30K level. And this is something we need to talk about. Are we going to be going up from here? Are we going to be going down? Obviously, no one knows the true answer, but we're going to be showing you all the key levels that you need to see, as well as, like I said, I'm going to be sharing with you my strategy to make money whilst we're in a bear market and my strategy on how we can tell which way Bitcoin is going to be going. So make sure you stay tuned to watch the video. So we've got Ethereum at $1,755. Again, taking an absolute beating recently, Ethereum. Um, we do have one biggest gainer, which is Bitcoin SV, only up 2.65%, but even most of the stable coins are down. And uh, we do have the biggest loser being Kava. We've got Avalanche and Cardano all leading the way. Solana as well, dropping below that $40 mark after being halted the other day. Very, very scary stuff for Solana indeed. Now we've got Bitcoin dominance at 46.2%. This is why I've been telling you guys recently, um, I'm holding back from buying loads of altcoins because this Bitcoin dominance number is increasing, meaning people are putting their money into Bitcoin. So Bitcoin will most likely move up before anything else does. If we jump on over to the Fear and Greed Index, we can see we're at a 10, which is, again, one of the lowest we've been on extreme fear. Um, but as we always say, guys, when we see extreme fear, that is the best time to buy. Historically, if you had just bought Bitcoin every time we saw extreme fear, you would have made money overall. So the extreme fear doesn't mean the time to shy away. It doesn't necessarily just mean throw your money at it, but it also means, you know, maybe now is the time to look for those buying opportunities because you won't get prices like this in a bull market in a bull market everything moves so so quickly you're going to wish you had have accumulated when things are down so let's take a look here at this article i read here which is usd 25 to 27k usd per bitcoin is this cycle's bottom this is what arthur hayes is saying so this obviously you know we saw this crazy bottom happen already which is around that 25 to 27k range you know this was further perpetuated by the uh, Luda foundation guard selling all this bitcoin and this whole debacle with the ust peg and this you know furthered the market sentiment to the downside now he says because this happened it's likely that this was the bottom of this bitcoin market cycle due to that being kind of a black swan event so he said that although proof that the LFG's Bitcoins were sold has not even been produced, there's no reason to doubt the veracity of the disclosures. He added that, therefore, the coins were indeed sold, calling it a, quite a feat to sell that amount of Bitcoin in such a short time. This is what we covered in our Luna video the other day. You know, we said that it was pretty crazy that they sold that much. And it didn't even help at all. So after contemplating the nature in which these Bitcoins were sold, I'm even more confident that the USD $25,000 level is this cycle's bottom. So let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think? Do you think that is the bottom? Have we already reached it? Will we not go below 25K? Uh, I personally think we may see a little bit of a dip down to around the 20 to 25K area, but I don't think we'll go below 20. Um, so let's start off with Ethereum on the charts and then we'll jump straight in to uh, the charts with Bitcoin. But Bitcoin with Ethereum right now, you can see it's playing out pretty much how we mentioned it the other day. We had this retest after breaking down to the downside and we do seem to be coming into my major buy zone, which is between $1,300 and $1,660. So that is my buy zone for Ethereum. That's where I'll start to dollar cost average even more heavily. And that's where I'll be looking to actually pick some up. And, you know, we've got the merger coming up for Ethereum as well as hopefully just an overarching bull market on its way. So I do think there's a lot of upside versus to the downside. You know, if things don't hold here, we do still have support kind of around that $1,000 to $1,200 level. But to be honest to me, it even sounds silly talking about Ethereum going that low just based on how much value the coins such as Bitcoin and Ethereum have. I do not think we'll be dropping that low. So let's take a look at Bitcoin. Like I was saying, I want to share with you some key levels and some key facts right now. So 
we have this wedge that we broke out of. Everyone got super excited, but we did not break this key level. I've been saying on this channel, we have to break 32.6K or else it is just a bull trap. And that is exactly what happened. A lot of people poured their cash. A lot, I saw a lot of people tweeting out saying, you know, again and again, that uh, we, we're seeing, oh, a bull market is happening right now. But you've got to remember things like this happen all the time with a manipulated market such as Bitcoin and crypto. So you can follow us at CryptoBusy on Twitter to get the latest updates when we're doing that as well. But here we are coming back down into our level of the daily chart, which is between $29,000 and $28,000. I said that if you are looking to take a long play, you know, based on this breakout, this could be uh, a level you'd want to look for. That being said, I'm still being quite conservative with it. I'm waiting for this level to break before I get excited or I'm waiting for a breakdown below 25K and then going to wait for a break above the 32 or 30K level. Um, we also have this lower worst, worst case scenario also, which is between 22 and 24K, which I've said again and again, that is the level that I would not expect it to go down below. Now, let's go on to the weekly chart. There's something I want to show you here, which if we bring up the EMA 200, which is that exponential moving average over 200 days, showing the average of price. Every time we hit this level on average, in theory, we're supposed to bounce from it. And this only has only happened once or twice in Bitcoin's history on the weekly chart. And this is again where we tapped into when we saw that 25K bottom for now. So this could be theoretically a level we move up from just based on the support this indicator provides. You know, on a, on a time frame such as the weekly chart, this indicator provides a lot of support, a lot of heavy support, meaning we could see ourselves go up. That being said, though, guys, 20K is still a potential target. And like I said, 20 to 22K, anywhere around that level is possible just based on the order blocks we have, based on the imbalance we have on the weekly. If we go down to the three day chart, you can see there is heavy support just sitting around at 19.7 to 20. Um, but I really don't see it going lower than that. If it does, then at, my, at that point, you know, Bitcoin is even more fundamentally undervalued and I'm sure tons of institutions will be picking it up. So I'm going to share with you one more thing as well, which is my strategy for making money in this bear market. And that is using the daily chart. That is using Pivot Point Super Trend Indicator and the SSL channel. This is a strategy I've shown a few times on the channel. And this is how it works. So essentially, when we are in a sell zone like this, for example, you want to wait for it to be the same essentially with the uh, other indicators. So we could either be in a sell zone with the SSL channel and then you wait for a pivot point super trend indicator to turn sell or vice versa. So the way it works is once this red line flips above the green line on the SSL channel, this indicator here, that shows us that the market is turned bearish. And same with the super trend indicator, you can see that when it says sell, that is when the market is bearish. So when we have a confluence of both, that is even more of a sign on the daily chart that we are going to head downwards. So you can see they both turned bearish at $39,000. So if you had to just listen to this indicator, you would, have yourself, you would have saved yourself a lot of pain or potentially made some money by trading it downwards. And guys, if you are looking to trade, you know, you can use our Bybit link. It's one of the links in the description. We've also got a free trading group. That's the first link in the description. If you want to be a member, it's completely free. So make sure you check that out. And then you can see here, right? We were in a bullish trend for the SSL channel. We went bullish at uh, $51,000 on the 6th of October, 2021. And from there, we rode up all the way to $69,000. So you've got a lot of potential here. Um, once again, you know, with the SSL channel to the downside here, $53,000, you could have saved yourself coming all the way down to 33. So there's so much potential. You know, it doesn't always work, of course. You're going to get times where it doesn't. For example, uh, here, you know, you may be only made a, a little bit of profit. But for the most part, you are making quite good gains with this indicator combination. I would recommend, however, keep to using it on the daily chart. It's not as effective on the lower time frames. It still works, but you will see more misses than uh, always wins. But I've just noticed the best accuracy is for the daily chart. But anyway, let me know if, if you want me to make a trading strategy video based around these two indicators because I think they're fantastic. And uh, with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something really, really informative from it. And if you did, please leave a like. It's super appreciated. And subscribe to the channel for more with the notification bell on to always notified when we post a new video anyway guys i'll catch you in the next one bye